Okay, so I'm going to introduce our guest for today. Um, so if you've ever, if you are a current customer or a, or you want to be a customer and you've chatted Hydroviv or you've called Hydroviv, there's a good chance that you have um, spoke to Christina, who is um, all things science in our customer support. So if you have really technical questions about your drinking water, um, she is who we direct all of those questions to. Um, and so I thought that she would be a perfect person to answer some of the questions um, that we have today about this really interesting phenomenon that's kind of going on, as I said, in like the Western part of the country. Um, so yeah. Um, and this is kind of an interesting topic because when we talk about um, taste and smell of drinking water, it's usually chlorine. So that like really pool like smell and taste that's really unpleasant to drink, but um, is definitely, re definitely a reality across the country. Um, and so today we're talking about something that's probably worse than that. Um, and that's like, that's dirt tasting and smelling drinking water. So super unpleasant. I've personally never experienced it, so I can't imagine how not good that is to drink. Um, so yeah, Christina researched this topic um, and also wrote a really in-depth article, which is linked in our bio, um, so you can go check it out. Um, so yeah, she's here to answer questions that I have and questions that any of you might have, so please feel free to answer or ask any questions that you might have. So, Christina, what is going on with this with this dirt smelling and tasting drinking water that's going on in California? Um, so, like, where specifically and when did people really start to notice this? So, it's actually a um, compound called um, geosmin, which okay. actually comes from the Greek for um, geo for earth and smen, um, osme, I guess, was the Greek for um, odor. So it's that smell when you dig into the dirt and you get that sort of fresh dirt smell. Mm -hmm. It's that. Um, and that compound was identified back in 1965. Um, although I guess they've been researching it since the 1800s. So um, it's really a you know, come to the fore in California more than other places, but it's really cropped up. Um, you know, you see it all over the country, all over the world, even. I, when I was doing my research, I pulled up an article from Korea, and apparently the um, utility, the water utility in Korea was, was seeing this as an issue, too. The reason it's been, um, I guess, more prominent in California recently is because of the drought mm -hmm. conditions that have been going on for a long time. And so when there's, um, you know, lower levels of water in the reservoirs and the lakes, um, you're going to get more of a concentration of, of the um, geosmin. And also um, you can have algae blooms in the um, cyanobacteria. The uh, blue-green algae is one of the things that produces geosmin. Now, the good news is it's not harmful. This, this stuff, it's just that we, for some reason, have like super sensitive um, olfactory systems and taste buds. So people detect even very, very small quantities of it. And it's just not very pleasant. But it's at the levels that it's found in the water, it's completely safe. So we don't have to worry about that. And you've probably detected it in other places, like um, in beets, that earthy taste in beets is caused by geosmin. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I know, like, my husband cannot stand beets because of that earthy taste. And it, it yeah. crops up in other food things, too. Like, um, I guess that musty smell when uh, a bottle of wine is corked. Some of that is caused by geosmin. And if people are eating catfish or some of the bottom-feeding fish, will sometimes get a muddy flavor. Same thing. It's all caused by geosmin. And then the other compound is called 2-MIB. I've got to look this up. 2-methyl isoborneol um, is another compound. The two, they always mention together. And they both sort of give this taste. Okay. Interesting. So geosmin is naturally occurring. 
Um, yeah. And it's not necessarily toxic, but I guess I'm just wondering, um, like how well researched is this field? And, you know, are there other contaminants that can kind of cause this um, earthy taste and taste and smell other than the two that you just mentioned? Like, I guess, because it's something that I, at Hydra Vive, we, we're not really, um, we don't really know that much about. So right. I guess I'm kind of just wondering, like, how is the field being researched? Is it, do we have a lot of information about this, about this compound? I don't think there's been a lot, you know, a tremendous amount of work being done on it. Um, when I was looking, there was, you know, there was some work being done, but um, probably because it's not toxic and it's not harmful. Um, people just, you know, there's so many other more pressing things that are toxic and harmful. So they're sort of um, looking at focusing their resources on that. Mm -hmm. um, so the... Um, municipal water companies will say, well, if you refrigerate it, it will make it less pungent mm -hmm. um, or adding lemon to it okay. um, can mask the flavor too. Um, the tough part about this is that the standard ways of purifying the water, um, not purifying, but just filtering the water or what the municipal water companies do um, won't take it out. It it requires a more intense kind of uh, um, treatment, and it's quite um, pricey. It's it's quite it's very expensive. Like even at at the home level, um, there's not been a lot of work done. So there's there's just sort of um, people have hypotheses about well, they think that either reverse osmosis or nanofiltration should take care of it, mm. but the studies just haven't been done. Um, or haven't, there, there's not a lot of studies out there. The other thing is it also, this, this kind of phenomenon does show up, tends to be at the end of the summer or early fall, mm. all over the country. I've seen it um, in the notices that some the water companies will sometimes send to the, um, you know, to their customers. Yeah. Um, the, uh, several of them were from the East Coast even, um, where they're just saying, the levels of the lake are low, or they've had to change to a different source. The reservoir is low. Oh. They've had algae bloom. You know, there's there's a lot of things like that that all can contribute to it. So it really could happen anywhere. It's because of the drought conditions in California. It's probably more prominent and has shown up in the news. But um, pretty much, it it could uh, happen anywhere where. I think it's surface water mostly because it's the cyanobacteria, it's the blue green, it's the algae, you yeah. know, it's the byproducts of the algae. Yeah. So obviously you, you mentioned drought and that's something that we've, we've been focusing a lot on at Hydro yeah. Vive. We've updated and we've created a bunch of new blogs, just explaining to people what they can expect with these new drought like conditions and how droughts impact drinking water. So right. This might be kind of a an obvious question, but with an increase in droughts, can we expect to see an increase in this geosmin and other um, other contaminants or other compounds that create this unpleasant dirt like smell and taste? It's it's a very uh, good likelihood that we would expect to see more of it. Um, and it's not just from the drought conditions, but also algae blooms. Um, I know I live in Florida and we tend to have more of the uh, algae blooms. Um, so that can affect the water systems if the uh, water companies are getting their water from surface water. So okay. um, definitely it's something that um, don't be surprised if it, if it you know, you, you drink your water and you're like, blah, it doesn't taste so good. Yeah. Um, it, it might happen anywhere because, um, yeah, because there's, it, it's not, um, yeah, it's just not uncommon. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's perfectly safe. I mean, that's the other thing. It's just, it, it's not pleasant, but it's not anything that we need to worry about. Um, there's no health effects at the levels of it that are in the water. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you kind of mentioned this earlier, but for all of the people listening and watching, um, just 
give us like what what can we do to reduce or eliminate this dirt like taste in our drinking water um i guess because it's a reduction in the source water is really when it becomes more prominent um we all can help to be better stewards of the water that mm -hmm. we're using so um just trying to conserve on water um, whenever we can. Um, there's all kinds of ways. I mean, they talk about the, you know, don't spend as much time in the shower. I'm guilty mm -hmm. of that too. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I know there are some places that have switched from using the, um, you know, from watering your lawns, they use reclaimed water to water the grass mm -hmm. instead of the water coming to the house. So okay. that's a great way to save on the potable water, the drinkable water. Um, yeah, there's there's um, there's a lot of different ways, and the water companies all in their water quality reports and on their websites usually have the how do you conserve on water ways to you know ways to use less water. So there's there's a lot of different ways to do it, mm -hmm. um, but every little bit helps. I mean, yeah. we think that what we do is literally a drop in the bucket. But when we all help to um, conserve on our precious drinking water resources, um, it makes a difference. Yeah. And it might make it a little more pleasant for everybody, too. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, that those are all the questions I had. I guess just to kind of summarize, this phenomenon isn't going away anytime soon. In fact, it's just going to become more and more prevalent. Um, good news is that it's not toxic. It's just not the best to drink. So, right. Yeah. Or develop a taste for beets. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, okay. So Christina wrote this really awesome article that goes more into depth about what we talked about today. Um, so again, you can find that in the link in our bio. Would definitely recommend checking it out and sharing it with people who live in super drought-like conditions who you know, might be wondering why their water tastes like dirt. Um, so as always, you can DM us on our Instagram um, and Christina will probably be the one answering those science, science focused questions. Okay. You can also email us at hello at hydroweave.com or use our live chat on hydroweave.com on our website um, and just, yeah, ask away. We are happy to help and um, any, any change in taste of your drinking water can be really alarming. And so we're here to kind of lower the anxiety and talk you through, you know, what's going on. Yeah. So, we're, we're water nerds. We love this stuff. Yes. We love it. <laughs> All right. Well, Christina, thank you so much. This was super informative. Um, and we'll definitely have you back on for, for more of these Instagram lives. So yeah. Awesome. Now that I know the tech works, I'll be a little less nervous next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, have a good rest of your Wednesday. Thanks. And you too. Yeah, thanks for joining, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.